Raven lads. 13 man grid, I believe, today. I don't believe Heavy Head's gonna be able to rock up. Santos should vote. Please make sure the thumbnail's posted, lads. Here's the thumbnail up, can you lot just check for me? Right, Santos has joined. Let me just load up the chat so I can see all of your beautiful faces. Has the thumbnail loaded for you, Locks? It's showing for me, but it hasn't. Heavy head is absent. Oh, shit. Right, the thumbnail has loaded. So good. Hello, everyone. How are we doing today? My name is Nin, and as most of you will know, near enough, ready to go. Hello, Vaslin Cock. Good luck today, my friend. So, we'll be ready to go soon. Hello, Ruben. Good luck today. Good luck, everyone. 15 people watching, hello! I have to wait 13 seconds, you know I'm gonna send my mum the stream link. I'm gonna send my mum the stream link. Right now, can I send it? I'm trying to put it in the grid finder Discord, it just won't let me. Thank you. There we go. So, hello everyone. Round one of the GTO division, and it would also be helpful if I had my keyboard in my hands, lads. It would, wouldn't it? It would be good. So if we can spec, oh god, if I can spectate properly, that's always helpful. Just about ready to get going. Oh, 
YouTube. Right then, so... Just make sure everyone's ready. We're not perfect here at GTL. Start time's seven, but we never start on time. Just making sure everyone is ready to go. Vaseline Cox says no, so we'll be waiting. Ping him. Just waiting for Vaslin Cock. I think he. We're nearly ready. JM Devil currently the fastest. Has Ruben set a time yet? SVV Ruben? No, I don't believe so. So, JM Devil, typical fastest so far in practice. He's the defending Division 1 champion, which is the, uh, basically the overall champion. It's the champion of champions here. Waiting three minutes for Vaseline Cock, and are you ready? Came on, Brian. I mean, if you remember last season here at Bathurst, Division 1's winning team has actually raced at Bathurst, yeah? Which was won by Devil in one of the best performances you'll ever probably get. Division 2 at Bathurst was an app, was, it was a brilliant race. Oh, sorry, Division 1 at Bathurst. It was a brilliant race. Definitely made up for the antics of the Bathurst 120, which was an absolute nightmare. But this man here lapped most of the field. He lapped everyone, and he lapped, he almost, he lapped most of the field at least twice. He's very shaky as well coming up to Solomon Park. What is Devil doing? What is Vaseline Cock doing? Devil drifting, oh god. Anyway, nearly ready to get, nearly ready to start. Brian's parked it at the escape road at turn one. Dino, he's not far off the pace either. If you remember, he got seven, he got second last time he was here at Bathurst in Division One. He had quite a nice performance that day. He was mainly for the fact that he knew it would be a race of attrition and even more so today with heavy damage being on. Last time it was light damage we was here and he waited for this man and this man to have a bit of a coming together. It was not the best I must say. Tim and Brian up at Skyline or McFinnigan Park. It was one of them that were coming together. That ended, didn't end their race but it ended their chances of being second on the podium. There was no chance I was going to catch Devil. Devil was off into the, vi into the distance after two laps. Which was something we came to be accustomed to until this man decided to rock up to the lead. SVV Ruben. This man's having a challenge here. He's, he's in the Mitsubishi. He's setting himself up for a challenge. He knows. The Mitsubishi, if you know Gran Turismo, it's one of the worst cars in the game in the Group 3 class. It's not the best. and. He's ready for it. He wants a challenge. Ruben's good. I mean, it's nice for he's uh, he's got a challenge. He's a very good driver. We saw it when he joined the season. Oh, as he runs into the back of Devil, giving him a bit of a push at the start. Let's hope we don't see any of that. Probably the only mistake we'll ever see Ruben make is he's getting some practice starts going. Shot doesn't want to work. Just make sure we're all ready. Vastin Cox waiting for Hayden. Just making sure everyone's ready. Vamos is rock roll for Mr. Osaka. Also, some news, you may have noticed, Rolly, this man, Vassman, has left the league, and that's not your way to get your debut on the way, but it's practice, so it doesn't matter. This one here, PPL Rolly, 
He is the reserve driver for BNR and he did one, he finished. Bastion Cox are just waiting for Brian. They know what time we should be starting, so I don't know why they wait. They should really be ready for seven, but this man here, Rolly, some news from today. Vaseline, oh, one minute, I just got a phone call. Vassman has backed out of the league, and Rolly will be replacing him with BNR as he's the BNR Div 2 driver. So he'll be in Div 1 for the rest of the season. He's got a bit of a head start to everyone else in this league. As, of course, he raced yesterday. So he's got some practice and so far he's got a decent pace. He's beating Tim who got third last time. Let's kick the Romanian. Right, Brian is ready. So... Qualifying is about to get on the way then here at the f first round of the GTO Division 1 Championship Season 2. For Division 2, the Division 1 boys, the creme de la creme of GTO ready to get under away and Devil on the mediums already as he comes out. That's going to be a strategy plan, I must say. Anyone else downfield starting qualifying on mediums now, so it's only Devil, so Devil will be pitting sometime. He'll probably be pitting on his own up unless he intends to qualify on the mediums when, well, that's just ballsy, but Brian needs to field away as everyone piles out of the pits, causing a nice, a massive slipstream train, which some people will enjoy, especially down the two master strokes got, which they've just come up, one of them, which is a mountain stroke towards turn two, quarry bend, and then down further. See on the top right hand of your screen, bottom right of the little track map, that is the Conrad straight, or as Dino Rod, this man calls it the Commodore straight. And here's something I found out what I could do yesterday. We have replay mode. Just Dano calling up through turn four. He's following Kmo Brian. These two not much separating them. But you don't really want to be following someone on your qualifying lap because if they have a mistake, that's going to ruin both your laps because you could get caught up with damage, which we saw in Division 1 with Shregu. He had continuous engine damage and he never got set up. And Knock and Bolts yesterday, he never got set up because of his continuous engine damage. So, just have to be careful. Came on Brian getting out of the way for Dino as he's already got a penalty and then is that damage on Brian's car? No, he's lucky, he's fortunate to get away with that. Dino's not actually starting on the mediums yet. I thought he might have been. Some drivers may back out just before the end and put some mediums on, that's why they're out in a hurry, but Dark Brian, he's an he's an aggressive driver, the owner, founder, everything, all the jazz at BNR. He's not going to really back out, he's going to stay in that slipstream, he's going to enjoy every inch of that, I must say. When he probably should be backing out and giving him some space, let's see, or is he just going to talk into the slipstream? Because I would expect him to just slow down for his turn, but no, he's going to want that slipstream, which, if Dino makes a mistake, and following especially up through Bathurst, up towards the hit, up the hill, so really from turn two all the way up to Forest Elbow, it's not the best, but Brian, he's going to gain a lot of time here, we're going to probably see him go purple. I don't know, I, really, I can't remember how the game works, but... Tugged into the slipstream of, of Dino as they go up Mountain Straight. I think Pop, uh, Rolly's just about behind him. Who's on the back of Rolly? OTBC, he is a new name for you. He's not a new name, you may be familiar with him. We got second in Division, in Division 2 last season. He's moved up to partner Terrible Tim in that can -Am car. JM Devils following Casey. Casey and Dino partnering up in the ART con. Devils extremely close onto the back of Casey. That could cause a lot of problems if Casey makes a mistake as he's lagging a bit there as you can see as they come up towards turn four and he just clips the wall, I think there's. No, Devils also qualifying on medium, so maybe he feels something in those mediums which not everyone else feels. Remember, you have to use two different sets of tires in the race. So JM Devils, he comes through McFinnigan Park, clipping all the curves, and he's now given Casey a fair amount of space. As up, 
through Mountain Street is, and Turn 2 is very on the back of him, which was quite scary as he seems to lose a bit of time as down the S's and the dip, but down the hill he goes towards Forest Elbow. Very shaky, but this man yet to get his first podium. He was three seconds. 3.9 second penalty, he knocked him off the podium at Le Mans at the season finale la, at Le Mans last season. Season finale, you get the gist if I can English properly. This one's yet to get a podium in that ART car. His teammate Dana Vosies now pulled away from Kmo on Brian a fair bit. He's going to set the benchmark lap time as he nails the apex nicely at Murray's. Down towards the line, Ben. What's it going to be? He's been quick in practice in the mediums. It's a 2014. Say 2015. Came up right. He goes behind with a 2028. Rolly. He goes third with a 203.2. OTBC. He goes fourth with a 203.3. Online Cruiser. He goes to the bottom of the pecking order. Casey. Where does he go? JM Devil. Casey actually goes second at 201. Yeah, 2019. JM Devil, I think he's had a issue somewhere around his lap with a 204. JD, he goes third. He's on yet to collect his first win. This time last season, round one, he was looking very good. He was challenging for the win, but that accident, that famous accident at Degna 2, cost him that. Mr. Osaka, he's knocked himself, what, ninth? Yes, he goes ninth. Now down to tenth as Ruben goes second. Dino's quicker than Ruben. Well, I never. It's a 2019, and after is everyone set their laps so far? No. Santos, he's on his outlap, and Tim, where is he? He's also on his outlap. So, Dino on provisional pole as he comes down. Let's get a nice um, cockpit view as he comes down through Forest Elbow. Let's see. As we ride on board with him, let's, it's a nice onboard camera, especially in these cars. It shows how little, if they are using cockpit view, a lot of them are using bumper cam, which is this cam. But a lot of them, so sort of rev are going to be using chase cam, but he's purple again, so Dynarod can extend his lead here. I don't think he's going to be pitting, I think he's just going to go for it. So he may have time to get round pit and then have another lap. No, he will have time if he finishes this lap, if he wants to pit, but he may go and swap onto mediums, as a lot of them may do. But round the final turn then, let's see if he can nail the apex. Let's see how his final sector's on. He was two tenths up. The first time round of asking at the end of sector three. Across the line, what's it going to be? He improves, but not by much. Casey, he's coming as there's actually a good chain. Into the pits is Kmo O'Brien. He's going to be taking some fresh tires so he can set a better level for the car. OTBC improves to fourth. Online Cruiser, he improves to eighth. Casey across the line. He goes fastest by a millisecond. Casey on provisional pole by a millisecond to his teammate. JM Devil, he improves into fifth. And JD Shadim, he retakes fourth from OTBC with a 202 flat. Well, Casey, what a lap. Best his teammate by a millisecond. SVV Ruben, what can he do as he comes through the ch Ruben's going slow, so what's gone on with him? Oh, he's... Ruben's had a cooldown lap. Ruben, he's eyeing it up then. He's going to have two more laps to go, but he's had a cooldown lap around the final turn. Let's follow on board with him this lap then. Oh, he's behind so far as he runs down towards Hell Corner. Breaking around about 60 meters. Nails the apex quite nice as you'd expect. Bit twitchy on exit, but gets it perfect. Down Mountain Straight, then he goes. Or up Mountain Straight, I should say. A few, it's very bumpy up this section. If you're on your force speed up, be careful. There's this little dip here which can cost you some time. He's already up by 1.4. Well, well, one tenth, not near enough. One and a half tenths up on Don Rod, but that's the first sector. It's only really a little. Key. It's turn one of a massive straight, so you really need a good exit. This car's not, it's actually got a solid top speed, but it's not really the best to anything else. As it comes up through turn four, now turn five, he runs up towards Solomon Park, keeping as close as he can to the barriers as possible, maximizing his time as we ride on board. This is beautiful. You can just see those, those beautiful gloves of SVV. Let's see how much he can demolish the field by a bit shaky, just a hit, hit to the left through Skyline. Catches the curb, almost loses it, but maximising the track limits as we now see him come down the dipper. He's improved, but he's lost time. Dynarod goes back to the top of a 201 flat. He's catching us some traffic. See, terrible to him in the background, yet a lap time, I believe. He now comes through Forest Elbert, so he's losing it here, and he's 
do you can see how much he's moving with you can see how much of a, of a wheel is moving very it's really struggling for red so shaky so sketchy devil goes third with a 2018 this is money we really need to be looking for Casey was his that will quickly go to him as his that didn't actually improve so back to Ruben is currently down in fourth he's purple He's still purple through the chase. Let's see. He's going to need to find a clean. He lost time through the hill with Dino in that Corvette. He's really good around here. We know that Corvette is incredibly good around Bathurst. One more turn to go. Is Ruben going to be on provisional pole or is Dino going to be in the prime seat? Santos, he goes for an He beats the defending champion with a 201.7. Round final turn. That's beautiful. Ruben, he's flying right now. What's the time going to be across the line? Provisional pole by 700. By seven hundredths, what a qualifying session this is turning out to be. Dinerod, he's got to find not much time. He's, those softs are holding up quite nicely as well. Through Forest Elbow, let's see the next split time is just at the end of Mountain Straight. It's a solid exit, a bit shaky. This is going to be his last lap. His teammate Casey's got to find near enough four attempts to put himself in. Dino, he's gone into the pits. I don't think he's. So is Dino going to be swapping onto the mediums? Dino's going to be settling for second. Well, that's interesting. Casey, what's he doing? He's holding up Devil a bit here. So is Casey, as he comes through, no, he lets Devil go as he goes and hits the wall at Forest Elbow. I think he was just going to let Devil through. Maybe I thought maybe he would hold Devil up as it's, that's his uh, teammate's rival here. Is Dino, yes, onto the medium. So he's got some strategy. JD Shadan's also done the same thing. What a qualifying session this this has been though. Devils behind. So the defending champion looking like he's going to be starting fifth. But what up from Santos? He had a struggle last season. Got a podium and a fourth place at Brands Hatch and Interlagos. But the rest of the season was lackluster from him. He's now moved to an independent. Let's see what he can do. Devil around the final turn. Is he going to improve? I think he's probably the last person I can challenge. No, he's not. He's a mile off. And Ruben. Is he going slow or is he pushing? I think Ruben may just be chilling. Has Casey cancelled his entry? Oh, the fucking idiot. That bleeming idiot, I must say. So what's the order? We'll be able to reset it. We'll sort the grid. Vaslincock, he improves, but that's not the worry right now. There is a way we can sort it. So I wouldn't stress. And what's happened with Tim though? Tim's quite a long way down. Has Tim backed out as well? Tim leave. What happened with Tim? No, Tim's 11th. Okay. I'm confused. Who's got himself in last row? Oh yeah, because Casey's backed out, I believe. Who's where? Who's where? So we're missing... Yeah, it just says 12th, even though it should be... Because Casey's time's still up there. That's confirmation. No, Tim is last, yes. So everyone, if you're in the stream, back out. If it will show. If you can hear me, back out to lobby. So, sorry about the technical difficulties. Casey backed out like an idiot, I must say, because that's twice he's done it. He did it last season. 
But at least he did it when qualifying was done and we could put everyone's time in. Brian has left for lobby, online crews are left. So we'll just wait for Brian. Sorry about technical difficulties, everyone. This is a way to start the season, isn't it, Casey? Thank you very much. If everyone will ready up, I do apologize. Oh, man. What's that gonna do to nerves of all the drivers then? That should that's probably really gonna unnerve KC. Change grid order. So what? Ruben on pole. Dino second. Who was third? Casey was third, so we need him to ready up. Casey even Santos. It's a good thing I was able to quickly get it jotted down. Devil, he needs to ready up. JD, OT, sorry about this everyone. Just need Vaseline cocked ready up. We'll be started. We'll be starting very quickly. Just a quick reminder. We don't want anyone being disqualified. So. JM Devil, he was fifth. Who was after Brian? Right, so Brian, Raleigh, Tim at the back, followed by v Tim. That's surprising as well in his qualifying. It's Mr. Osaka and Online Cruiser. They sort of positions, and that should be the grid. So just confirmation of the grid then. Ruben on pole followed by Dino Rod after a brilliant qualifying. That was that was a brilliant qualifying session. I must say Casey at certain point a millisecond ahead of his teammate. That was brilliant followed by Santos who's probably his best qualifying today since Brands Hatch last season. James Devil he's going to want to do better as the defending champion. JD should I'm as well. His Brands Hatch last season was terrible. He's going to be happy. He's Qualified at least sixth. It's a lot better than when he was last time. OTBC on his Division 1 debut puts it on seventh ahead of Kame O'Brien, who got his podium at the end of the season. That's quite good. But Rolly at the end making his Division 1 debut. I love the racing yesterday. Ninth place, just outside of points. Not bad. And Motorsport West, Online Cruiser, and Mr. Osaka. They're going to want to be moving up. And Vaseline Cock Division 1 debut. Not going to be happy with 12th. And Terrible Tim got a podium last time he was here at Bath First. Down in last. Let's get the race started, Vam. Sorry about the technical difficulty. Sorry about the delayed start. Blame Casey. Just confirmation of the grid event. Ruben and Dynarod. That outside lane has shown to be the better of the two spots. So I put money on Dynarod at the start. Casey in third with Casey in fourth. It's uh, no. Yes, I forgot. Always is weird with this fucking grid. Casey in third. Santos fourth. You see the lights on the left hand side. They're red. And we are green at Bathurst away. There you go. Then JD Schneim seems to have got a flying start as well as online cruiser. Dynarod as well into the lead at turn one. So brilliant start by him starting on the mediums. Followed by Ruben and Casey. JD's off into the background. Typical JD. And there's some smoke kicked up in the back. JMW's gone up into fifth. 
Online cruiser into six. That's a brilliant start by him as Dynarod. He leads up the hill. Ruben's going to look to make a move as they go down towards turn two. Side by side, Casey is going to be defending as well from Santos, it seems. Round down the inside, Ruben goes. Dynarod's got to defend around the outside. It's just a brilliant move by Santos and further back down in fifth. What's going on there? Online cruiser, can he get a good look at it? Casey's falling right back down six. It's death problems for him. Santos is into third, followed by JM Devil. Well, this is a chaotic start as Ruben's retake. Can the lead? Let's have a replay of that. Looking at the grid, look at Dynarod start here. This is blistering from the Irishman. You see the lights on the right hand side. Away they go, that's a blistering start. I must say, and there's smoke kicked up at the background. Up and Dustin Cox right into the back. I've just realized that. As they're now through turn one, what happens with JD? Let's find out. I don't think JD just ran wide, he got caught out. And then Ronnie, he seemed to get through into seventh as well. That's brilliant as we rejoin the race and they come down the hill. Santos says Dynarod got problems. Dynarod's had an issue somewhere as he's gone down to fifth as it's a poor start by the ART boy, JD Shadime. He's down in seventh as an online cruiser. He's got himself into fourth. That's a flying start as Ruben now he seems to pull away. He's on soft just as he comes down the commerce train trying to get some heat into his tires. Santos and JM Devil. JM Devil's looking for a move as they come down towards the chase. He's going up the inside line. Is Santos though. JM Devil into the chicane part of the chase. He'll have the inside line. He goes ahead prematurely. Santos is going to have to defend around the outside. Very late on the brakes there. For all the Portuguese when his he goes off, he's going to rejoin the track behind JM Devil. And now this is familiar sight. It's death at the end of lap one. It's further chaos though back. It's not done yet. Online Cruiser, he's defending from Santos. Online Cruiser actually got past Santos. As Santos, there's a bit of contact there. Casey, Dynarod's gone further back as JM What's happened with Dynarod? Dynarod's into the pit straight away. There's a lot of people into the pits actually just trying to get their tyres done. But at the end of lap one, Ruben leads from JM Devil. Online Cruiser's got himself into third. So Brown stop aiming, followed by Santos and Casey trying to reclaim back third position as they run down towards Quarry Bend. JD Stein after his lap one instance got himself back up and Tim from last has got himself into seven. That's a brilliant start by the Canadian. Casey not quite close enough, but what's going on at the back in the pits then? It's engine damage for Papi for Rolly. Rolly had a flying start and now he's for back. Mr. Osaka has gone to the mediums. What ties is Rolly gone to? Rolly's also on to mediums. Dynarod. He stayed on to his mediums. OTVC. Did he pit? No, he didn't. So, Mr. Osaka, he also went on to mediums. And Vaseline Cock, don't know what happened with him. Might have to check that out. But Ruben, he's got a 1.4 second lead as Devil is hunting him. So just confirmation, Rolly and Osaka, they have used both sets of tyres already. Dynarod, he just took his tyres, got repetitive damage and now he's going to have to work right from the back. That's a chaotic lap one. Further down, Casey, he's chasing down Santos. He's lap one, maybe he's a bit unnerved after that problem. Yet. Santos goes a bit deep into Forest Elbows. We ride on board with Casey in the Toyota F. T1, I believe, is he's in one of the Toyotas. He's tucked into the slipstream of Santos, just can't quite gain, doesn't seem to have the top speed, maybe it's himself. And he's also not fully tucked into the slipstream, but he's gone purpose to run down towards the chase then. Let's see what the Brit representing Spain can do. He just backs off a bit, can't quite catch up, and the more of these two go at it, which they haven't gone thoroughly yet. Casey's been very, very sportsmanship, but a bit of a mistake on the exit from Santos as Casey now going to try and go around as Santos closes his door, but it leaves him the space now the inside line. But Casey goes for the switch bow, that's catching Santos off guard. What a move by the Brit, there's contact with the Brit. Casey sent off shaking down towards Hell Corner, he's going to have the inside line, it's a 12-4-1 by Casey, he's going to have the inside line, and now Santos, he's, oh, that's a bit risky from him, the more these two are going out now, you see, in the background, JD should I mean, he's catching off to him, took trying to the slipstream, now Casey's got to worry about JD, the slipstream of the Mazda, that is going to be a problem, JD lifts off a bit, he's, he's on those mediums as well, Moves to the right hand side, inside line into Quarry Bend. Casey's gonna have to defend from round the outside. It's a popular defending squad, but can't quite get it done. JD holds on, that's a good move there by the Germans. He now chases down Santos. Further back, Brian, he's found himself defending from OTB, so he's all over the back of that Porsche. Well, this is a race and a half, and we're only five minutes in. OTBC sliding around at the rear. Dynarod, what time has he got to make up? He's got he's 13 seconds off the back of OTBC, 23 seconds off the lead. But that is not the ideal start 
for the Irishman, but we see here now what's Ruben is Ruben doing the typical what we've seen a bit of fuel saving as he comes very close to the barriers at the dipper there. But JM Delver arms at the back here. We're gonna see a historic battle for the lead here between Ruben and Devil. As they run down the common street, it's a good exit from Forest Elbow from Ruben as he pulls at least two turns from Devil there. Further back, Miss Online Cruiser. How's this for a start? Online Cruiser started ten what, 10th, 11th? No, he's Online Cruiser started 10th and he's now got himself into third. And he's two seconds off the back of... He's two seconds ahead of Santos as well. Casey's really falling off the back of OTPC. He seems to get past Brian as Brian tries to fight back. And he will hold up position for now. As Tim... Well, the biggest winners from the opening laps. Online Cruiser and Terrible Tim. I must say biggest losers. Casey and Diner the ART boys really not enjoying this. Tim may just want to... OTBC is may hoping that his can -Am racing teammate Terrible Tim ahead can hold Brian up a bit as he catches up to him as they run down towards Mountain Straight. Back up at the front, down towards Quarry Corner. JM Devil moves to the right hand side. He's going to have the inside line. Ruben's going to look for a switch, but there's not much room here. And Ruben will just secede that position nicely. Further back, though. JD's in close enough to Santos and Casey. He's just going to have to really think about what strategy now and how we can get ahead of these as he's lacking the pace. Terrible Tim! Oh, he's off and he's caught damage. And Brian and OTBC are both going to go through there. As OTBC, he's actually looking for a move. On towards Brian. As Brian, he's started wall riding and that's a mistake by Brian. What happened there? If we can get a quick replay of that, if it will show. To see Tim just gone off into the barrier. On board with OTBC. Is that contact? Brian just backs out of there. Is Brian trying to maybe dummy a penalty there? No, Brian really backed out of it. And OTBC is now through into seventh within two turns. He gains two positions. Back up at the front. Ruben's going to try to take back that position on to JM Devil. It's one of the quickest guys versus one of the smartest guys. Ruben, he's a genius when it comes to strategy. We'll be interested to see what he can do. Remember that you've got to use two different compounds as well. He's a genius when all you can use is sauce, but now there's mediums and parts running into the mix. He's even smarter. Took Dry right into the slipstream of Jim Devil as they run down towards the chase. He's going to go for the move, or is he just going to hold on tight? He's gone green, but that slipstream allowed down that massive straight of the Cobrod straight. He's just going to hold on nicely. He doesn't go for the move. He's made just sit here. Took it. We've seen him do this before, which Devil's lost races out. Because Rupert, Devil's too aggressive. He'll just take the lead. Thinking, oh, Ruben's slower, but then Ruben's actually letting J, letting Devil through, and Ruben just in the slipstream and fuel save, and Devil keeps forgetting that's what Ruben does, and he lets him do it. It's almost like JM Devil's got this arrogance about him, like I can pull away, and Ruben, if you want, when Ruben, if Ruben wants to catch you, Ruben will catch you, and you're just gonna have to wait. But online cruiser, he's he's sitting pretty in third place. His teammate, Mr. Osaka, where's he? he's down in 12th. Dynarod, he's he's getting two seconds. He's also got a penalty he's now got to worry about and get rid of. The battle for fourth place. Casey's catching up to the back of JD Shadam. There's OTBC in the background as well as there. Santa seems to be pulling away. Is Casey not going to be close enough into turn two to really go for a move? But if he keeps up this pace, he may just be there. As we'll ride on board of Casey as they go up the hill. Through turn three and four, through the cutting. Casey breaking a bit early, just giving JD some space just in case he makes a mistake, which is easy to, especially in that Mazda. But Mazda is very twitchy at the rear. And it is a comfort zone on pop. JD, he's had a habit of spinning, especially this race, but that Mazda is so sketchy. It's got some speed, but you really have to tame the beast. As cockpit view in this Toyota is so good as Casey gains so much time through Skyline as they come through the S's and into the Dipper. It's a big drop here, it's what's called the Dipper as JD, he's catching the wall, and that's what I mean, is he turned into Casey, Casey's lucky to get no damage from there, but JD should die. He may not be so lucky, he's caught damage there, and OTBC's now going to be right onto the back of him, in cockpit view of that Nissan. Which is, seems to be the car of choice for the Skyline team. Is he going to be close enough? Is he going to have the straight line speed? Is JD straight line speed going to be impacted by that front damage, that front bump damage, and that left suspension damage? OTBC's tucked right into the slipstream. Looking like it's going to go for a move into the chase. Into the right hand king, then they go. JD Strong's also caught right to the back of KC. He doesn't go for a move. Neither of them 
go for one. They both look like they was going to think about one, but no one actually went for it. Came up, Brian's down five, five seconds off the pace, but if these guys can keep going out, he can find himself catching up. Down towards Murray's vent, JD peaks for a move, OTBC goes a bit deeper, just holding on as he's now though, got a good run out of the final turn. Down towards Hulk going to be the inside line, JD's kind of been caught napping, he's going to have to take the long way around to defend here, as OTBC just about caught... OTBC can't hold on, but he's fishing around the place very snaking, big catch of oversteer. Just able to get it. And OTBC is now finding himself 1.5 seconds off the back. And he's going to have to hope Casey and JD can go at it and hold him back up. Up in fourth, Santos is finding himself having to catch up to Online Cruz, who's currently having the best race so far, I must say. Starting 10th and now in third. Making the most of the chaotic first lap. JM Devil, he should. JM Devil's fine. He's, co he's happy. He's comfortable leading from the front. You're not going to force Ruben into a mistake though, Ruben doesn't make mistakes, Ruben's going to be happy just to sit here and beat you on the pit stops, because that's what Ruben does best. Up the hill, Casey in fifth chasing Santos, trying to find his maiden podium, and if you can have a good strategy, which we never know, strategy is always an issue, and with heavy damage as well, Santos seems to have made a mistake and he's catching up. Casey going green, setting green sectors, so you know he's flying, you know he's quick right now, but with heavy damage being a thing, you mean we've seen it, Darnarod's gone down the field on the first lap. It can cause problems. Speaking of Darnarod, he's now 8 seconds off the back as he's chasing Terrible Tim. If he can salvage points, that'll be good. OTBC, he's already caught up to the back of JD Shadam. He's maybe had a mistake somewhere. OTBC, he's not got damage because he had a mistake at a part where there's no wall. So, he got quite fortunate there. If you're going to make a mistake here, make it down at the stadium, not on the mountain. But top right to the slipstream, nonetheless. He's got that massive straight line speed in the skyline. Round the outside is going to go into the first box chase. There's a bit of contact as Wheels Budge, but OTBC's got to move safely. Done. Is JD going to try and fight back? No, he's not. As they run down towards the final turn, then the more these two go at it, Casey's going to be enjoying the chance that he can just have some clean air and catch up, not worry about defending. But he's JD, he's got a very good run out of the final turn, tucked in towards Slipstream. It's not very long straight here, but nonetheless, Slipstream can be valuable, he just peeks out to the left hand side, he goes for a very late move there JD, cuts the corner a bit and he lets OTBC back for, I think he realised that, so OTBC snaking around again, 27 viewers, thank you, record viewership, I love you all, share the stream out to your mates, well, it's Jurassic, this is the final race of round one, division one, it's been a hectic weekend, I've done four races this weekend, but here at GTL we've had three races and it's going to be the same order until the final race of the season at Interlagos. But nonetheless, Kamal Bryan into the background and more these two go after OTBC and JD Shadam, the more that Kamal Bryan's going to catch up after his mistake here at turn three. But OTBC started ninth, I believe. I'll go check, because I've got the start list somewhere, because I'm an idiot. But anyway... Yes, oh, no, it was Roddy, started 7th for OTBC, so it's, it's a good debut for him so far, I must say. And I think so far he's just going to be happy to chill where he is. As we're now 14 minutes into the race, we're approaching the first bit of pit window, which is at 20 seconds. You see Ruben tucked into the slow stream, he's not going for moves. Which Devil should realise is a sign that he's fuel saving. Which means Devil should have a fuel save and let him through all... I don't... Excuse me, I don't know, but he needs to be cautious. 28 views it says for me. Love you all. But JM Devil's gonna have to really be cautious of Ruben's strategy because he's done this many times. Ruben may not seem the quickest guy, he'll just look, he's really close. He can go for a mover, he just peeks out, he's gonna force Devil to go defensive, but again, Ruben just stick to stop. He'll stay in the slipstream. And let's just come quickly compare fuels. Ruben's actually burnt a bit more fuel than Devil has. Oh, got he's got more he's got less than I thought he would Ruben. But nonetheless, both of these guys seem to be quite efficient. But Online Cruiser, Santos actually finally caught up to the back of him. Oh, Online Cruiser's got damage, so his Online Cruiser had a mistake somewhere. I see Casey in the background as well, so Casey's playing chances. Not out, but yeah, this one's knocked over the 200 meter board. How unkind. But Online Cruiser now going to be under pressure. He's going to have straight lines. He's not got the fuel that everyone else has got. He's going to have the lighter car, but he's going to have the damage as well, which is going to make the car less aerodynamic. And Casey further back as well. He's in the slipstream range of Santos, but he's not had the best of exit, it seems, out of the first turn. I think Online Cruiser down towards turn 2 will be able to hold on as Rube, but as Santos are in those mediums, he's just holding on nicely. So let's quickly go through the tyres everyone's on. 
Sauce for Devil, Sauce for Ruben, Sauce for Cruiser, Mediums for Santos, Sauce for Casey, Mediums for JD, he's also got damage as he got past OTBC, Sauce for OTBC, in 8th, Brian on the Sauce, Terrible Tim on Sauce, Darnold on Mediums, and then Vaseline Cock, he's on Sauce, don't know if he started on Mediums, I think he did, no, I think he started on Sauce. Went into the hits, Rolly and Mr. Osaka, the only ones that have actually completed the main strategy so far, being the, the two Tizers coming out to Forest Elbow. Bit of a nice, like, kiss of the wall there by JM Devil. Maybe a sign, but he's a bit under pressure. He's maybe feeling the heat from Ruben in that Mitsubishi. Quite a bulky car. Maybe he's just feeling it. I mean, Devil is not the coolest person we've seen. We saw it at Spa when Devil's not at the front, not leading. He struggles a lot. Panamanian power. Ruben took around to slipstream. He could easily go for a move here, but he's not. Because Ruben's a genius. Ruben's just going to sit here tight. And he's not going to go. He's going to let Devil burn up all the fuel. He's going to tuck in the slipstream and able to feel safe. Because that's what slipstream can do. But the battle for third van, Casey's cover arm to the back of Van Santos, he's just going to sit in the slipstream and save his tyres. I think he may know that the fuel for Online Cruiser is not the best. Out of these three, who's got the best fuel? Online Cruiser's got a quarter of a tank left. Just over quarter for Casey, and in fourth route, Santos seems to have the best, and he's also going longer on the medium, so maybe he's doing a bit of fuel saving anyway. And these two just need to be careful, because if JD Shadon can get into the mix down in sixth, he's a quick guy. If he can find himself looking for a move, that is scary. KC, is he going to go for a move as well? Is he going to think about fuel saving? Because if you can take more fuel into the next pit stop, that could be... If you take more fuel into the pit stop, that's, you know, that's a benefit. We've seen with Ruben so many times. As Ruben's actually gone into the lead, as Devil made a mistake. Devil's not got damage. Maybe Devil just let him through as Ruben's now... Got a bit more fuel in there for Ruben, just unleashes the last bit of his fuel and starts to put away. That's dangerous for Devil. But these guys here, we saw with Ruben a lot, he'll just fuel save, and whoever takes the most fuel going into the pit stop, so they can take, spend a lot less time in the pits taking fuel. As Casey, as they come through McFinnigan Park, Santos brushes the wall there. Maybe Casey being right to the back from feeling the pressure, but Santos now onto the back of the online cruiser. Maybe his soft tires are feeling the pressure. And at this point, you'd say Santos the best rubber is down towards the S's. He's going to look for a move. He's not going to quite go for a juice round. Those Bruin has a favoured overtaking spot from Juice Realm. And maybe down into the chase, you could see a nice overtaking move. They come down towards Forest Elbow then for the ninth time this race. Well. Eve way on my crew's got to be happy after a poor qualifying. It's a good exit by Santos. Snake in a bit of Casey brushes the wall at the back. As they run down towards the chase then. The biggest straight here. It's all downhill as well. Gaining a lot of speed. Especially tucked into the slipstream. Santos runs to the back cover on my cruise. He's going to go for a move. He's within. He's under a tent before we even get to the right hand. Kinky's he's just going to bail out of it. So is he going to go for a move? He's going to wait until they come into the chase itself. No, he's not going to go for it. Casey... That Toyota's looking quite shaky at the rear, quite unstable, I believe it's the F1 type. Or whatever that Toyota is called, there's a Supra which Santos is in I believe. I can't actually tell, someone, if you can let me know which, uh, if it's the Supra or the other one, the F1 type, whatever it's called, it'll be nice to know. But I don't think these guys are really pushing it too much, because if JD Shadam can get into the mix, and let's see what JD Shadam's fuels at, JD Shadam's running, fuels running low, he's also got some damage but into the pits of an OTBC and Kim O'Brien I think OTBC dived into the pits and Kim O'Brien's like I'm not gonna let you get away with that one who's got the best pit crew then let's find out is it BNR or is it Canam which one's quickest into the pits then comes the Canam car what tires go on it's a beautiful live round must say we saw it last time we saw it yesterday with juice round fuel goes into that car what's it gonna be then see those Bridgestone rubber let's see what's better Bridgestone or what Bridgestone or Michelin. So far, Bridgestone seems to be doing better than OTBs. Then came O'Brien's Michelin's. With fuel into the car. Who's going to be out first then? The, it, you hear that sound. The car's being repaired. It's onto Soft. So OTBs, he didn't repair his damage. He's got a penalty. That's what I've just realised. Came O'Brien, what tyres? He's gone on. He's gone to medium. So Brian's strategy is complete. But back at the front, the gap just on the red second. There's maybe. Maybe Ruben's feeling nice and he's going to do a bit of leading now. It's almost like a marathon letting someone lead in. Oh, like a cycling race. Is He's right to the back of the slipstream, so maybe that lack of speed by Ruben, maybe he's still fuel saving a bit. 
and who now? JMW should maximize his time in the slipstream and just get a bit more fuel saved. Get down the hill, down the Conrad Street, then for the 10th time of this race, Santos runs it back. Is he going to go for a move? You see those tires, online cruisers, his tires are really suffering now as well. So if Santos goes for a move here, it's going to be fairly simple for him. But he backs out and go for it. And Casey seems seemingly just about holding on in the slipstream as those brake discs slide to top red. But there's a mistake there by Santos. As now Casey's going to look to go through. Santos just about holds on as he made a very unfortunate mistake and into the pits. Then goes Casey trying to undercut. And he actually is following online cruiser who was due a pit stop. Those tyres are looking terrible. But they are into the pits nonetheless as we are approaching. As we are at that 20 minute mark. We're at that pit window. So, ART. ART and Motorsport West, they're put up to the test for the first time. ART especially. Darnold's also into the pits. This is his second stop of the race as well. So ART double stacking here. So Motorsport West then. Tires go off. It's a bit slow on entry. But fuel going in. Same with Casey. What tires are these lot going on to? Remember, Dynaro Thames also into the pits as well. So Canon making their second stop. Where's everyone gonna come out in? Vaseline Cock, he's also into the pits. They're all on softs. Casey, who's going to break first? Casey onto the mediums then. So he'll do both ties on. Like Cruiser as well onto mediums. Rolly, he's done his strategy. He's onto the mediums. Tim, he's finally in. What tires is he going to take? What tires is Dino Rod going to take when he leaves? Dino Rod's gone onto the softs. So that's Dino Rod done. And well, this is a big shake up. What's Vaseline Cock going to take? And what's Tim going to take? These are two ties as well. We need to be very. Cautious off. Mr. Osaka, he's into the pits for a stop. Maybe he was in just to repair the damage. Tim's actually got engine damage. I've just realized so that's going to cause him some big problems. He's far down. Vaseline Cock onto the mediums. Onto the mediums for Tim as well. So it's a big undercut by Casey's. He's gained a lot more time than Online Cruiser. Because he's gained four seconds. He's down fuel. He's down damage. I think that's because of the damage that Online Cruiser had. So if we quickly mark that down, Casey, Tim. Dino, who else has done the strategy? The Vassal. I think down in 13th as well, Mr. Osaka. So we've already got near enough half the field have completed the strategy. There's Dino Rod and Vassling Cock. Well, yeah, we've got eight people. Completed the strategy so far. Rolly, Osaka, Brian, Online Cruiser, Casey, Tim, Dino, and Vaseline Cox. So that's very good from them. Let's back up at the front. Santos, he's into the pits and he's. Well, let's see what ties he's going to take. As these two are going on for a while, none of them are really figuring. None of them really are red light yet. So they could go on for another two laps here, the leaders. So, Ruben and Devil, they could actually find themselves going maybe for a one-stop because the softs, these guys are taking the softs a while. Where's Santos going to come out? Casey, where's he? Casey's coming down towards turn one now, but where's Santos? Santos is out. They're going to be racing on exit then. Santos has just got the nick of Casey. He's actually gained a fair bit more time as Santos. He's going to be the ninth driver to complete the quote-unquote strategy event and using both compounds of tyres. Ruben, Devil and JD yet to pit as well. So that will take us up to 12 if they do it and he's actually gained a second Santos and Online Cruiser has been the biggest loser in the pits as he's now down to 6 as he had the damage yet to repair. So keeping your nose out of the wall. Rolly's saying he's going to retire. That's unfortunate on his debut in Division 1. Is his connections quite poor so Rolly he's backed out and into the pits that is Rolly's race done that is a real shame because he was running quite well but Ruben and Devil catching up to the back of Mr. Osaka who pulls out of the way almost didn't find himself going into the pit lane there to let these guys go over the blue flags and Devil and Ruben's fuel they're looking near enough tired now as Devil's just doing a bit more fuel saving we've got 30 second lead to JD Shadam who's also yet to pit as he's got red light and he'll be pitting this lap. He's on the mediums. So. As he comes round the chase. When he's going to be into the pits I believe. Yes he will. Into the pits then. Let's see what his independent mechanics at the Shaddai Motorsport West can do. Linked with Motorsport West. But not quite Motorsport West. With his bubblegum liver. With his bubblegum suited pit crews. They bring out those 
Dunlops, an interesting choice of tyre for the German. But where's Santos? Santos was ahead of JD come the pit stops. He's got a big undercut as well, but let's see if JD's overcut. Maybe he may come out a bit behind. In this case, he's 2.5 seconds off the back of Santos now, so he's seemingly losing a lot of time. But where is JD going to be coming out then? Fuel going into that car. He's got a bit of damage. Let's see if he will repair that. It's not much. It's only minor. And he was a two-second stop for the damage. And Dino's now got himself back in seventh. And that is JD done. He's gone on to the softs. But let's talk about Dino down in eighth. He's got himself back up into the point. So that is very good for him. So who's left to actually complete the strategy on tyres? Ruben... Devil, Devil's red light in it, so is he going to go for an undercut or is Ruben going to anticipate this? Is Ruben going to is is get the news that Devil's going to be in this lap and that he should pick this lap as well to block the undercut or is he going to go longer? Let's see what Ruben can do. Ruben can probably go another lap and maybe even find himself one stopping this, which will be interesting. Through the chase for the Govan, let's find out. Who is yet to do the strategy vote? I can't quite find out yet for you. Into the pits then goes JM Devil. The double C pit crew will be waiting for him then. Hey man, Vaslinkock. His teammate is right down the order. But Ruben's going to go out. He's going to stay out for another lap then. But who hasn't taken both sets of tyres? Let's go down the order. I feel like I'm missing someone here. I feel like I've missed someone. OTBC. Has OTBC actually pitted yet? OTBC has pitted and he took two sets of socks, I believe. He's actually on the back of Online Cruiser. I've just realised Online Cruiser's under pressure from the Brit who... Online Cruiser has been in third for most of this race, but now he's under pressure from the Brit trying to make his way up with that 1.1 second pound. He's going to be the inside line going into the chase then. But he just holds off for now as he wiggles out a bit. And the more these two hold up, the more these two have got it. Dynarod's going to be catching up as on Dynarod could fancy himself a nice little comeback here. Rubens Vo at the front is going to have to put his foot down as Devils come on to mediums. Add him to the list of drivers that have done it. So it's just Ruben who hasn't pitted yet and OTBC yet to take both sets of tyres. But Devils going to have to have a flying out lap here. And they're pretty much going to be equal on fuel. It'll be interesting how much fuel Ruben takes. Because we could be seeing a bit of a deja vu as Ruben's red lights now come on. Of what we saw at Le Mans where Ruben made it look like it was going to go for a one stop took practically no fuel and then went on to the softs and absolutely had a flyer but he's not started on the mediums so it'll be interesting to see what Ruben can do JM Devil he's going to have to have an absolute flyer Ruben though those softs aren't looking too bad but how is that fuel is he going to be able to stick it in first the whole way round can't see what mode he's in He's very shaky out of the chase first, so maybe there's a sign his tyre's gone. Is he going to go round again or is he into the pits? Into the pits then, SVV Ruben. The last car to pit, where's JM Devil on track? He's coming down the corner straight, he's just come out of Forest Elbow. Onto the corner straight now, 35 seconds is the gap. JM Devil's going to have to have an absolute fire as Donald's now got himself in. Donald was actually eight for my bad. Ignore my waffling. 3% fuel. How much fuel does Ruben take though? Those SVV mechanics have come all the way over from Italy for him then. Into the pits he comes. Off comes the old tyres. On goes the new ones. How much fuel is he putting in? This is going to be important here. How much fuel does Ruben put in? Is he going long? Is he going short? What's he doing? Devil, he's coming onto the pit straight now. Ruben, he's still in the pit, so I think he's taking a full tank. Maybe he's going to look to go to the end like Devil. Up goes the lollipop. How much fuel is he taking? He's full tank there, and Ruben's onto the mediums, but where's Devil coming out? Devil's just come out around the final turn, and his outlap's not been the best, it seems, as the gap's practically the same. So Devil's had a bit of a problematic outlap. It's not been the quickest. Maybe he struggled getting tyres up to temperature, and Ruben holds the lead then. And we may be in for an absolute cracking battle. Div 2 race yesterday was one of the best we've seen. Div 1, though, is topping his Dino's now got himself into six. Actually, is what's gone on here? OTBC's gone off, and Dino's got some clean air. And Brian's actually into ninth as well as Brian further back's looking for a move onto online cruiser as he's got two seconds off penalties. He, oh, Brian catches the curb and almost is sideways prematurely. And Dino's now. 
He's charged back up from his first lap accident. He's now got himself in six, but KL Bryant, he's pulled out of the slipstream as he goes down towards online cruiser. He pulls to the right hand side of the inside line into turn two. He has it done. Brian holds on to it, and I just got a message from my mom that distracted me. Brian round the outside, he has that move. That's a bright move by the Estonian, I must say. That's a replay of that. Tugged into the slipstream. And that Porsche doesn't have much straight line speed. But compared to that DVR Aston Martin, KL Brian just had the slipstream. He wasn't quite heading to the turn, but in the inside line, late break, he's sliding there, sliding around there as well, just about holds on, and online cruising couldn't really get much done, that's a brilliant move by the Estonian, as he continues now down towards the S's and the Dipper, one of the trickiest parts of the circuit, look how tight is it, it's like the, I call it the Australian Monaco, the Monaco of New South Wales, it's like a slalom down here, the car always wants to escape from you, you just have no grip at all. Down towards Forest Elbow then, Brian drifting round, gets a good exit, but those, their little battles allowed OTBC to put a four second gap, and Dynard's near enough two seconds up the road, J.D. Schneider's got himself into fifth, and Ruben and Devil are going out as Ruben. It seems as Devil's ahead prematurely, but what's going on, Casey, he's six seconds off the back now, so is he trying to fuel save, is he going for a long run, what's he doing on those mediums, but J.D. Schneider, nonetheless, further back, is catching up, and Casey... What is he feeling the pressure here? Especially, he, he's so desperate for his first podium. Who knows? But K nonetheless, Casey drives on Santos in for 20 seconds off the back. I don't think, unless there's a chaotic accident, which these two, the quick drivers, the smart drivers, and they are fair drivers. It's unlikely they're going to make a mistake and have a coming together. They're not going to go for stupid moves. They're both they're two very nice guys. They're very smart. Ruben and Devil, absolute gems of the league, I must say. And they're not going to really cause an accident. They're not going to be bra they're not going to be brash. They're not going to go for a unneeded move. It's JM Devil, nice lap. Yeah, he's got fastest lap. I must say his outlap as well. 159. How should the better outlap? Devil actually the better outlap than Ruben. But Ruben now is ahead. Is Ruben just putting his foot down? What's Ruben planning here? Because he doesn't seem like he's fuel saving. He's burned a lot more fuel and he is just pulling away now, especially down the streets. But there will, now he's in the slipstream. Now the top now they're reaching top speed. He's now going to be gaining on Ruben as they come down towards the chase. But he's not really gaining much and Ruben's Ruben's struggling. Uh, Devils on the mediums as Ruben. He goes onto the gravel a bit there, and that's going to allow Devil to catch up and down towards the final turn. I've just realised, checking the chat for his team. Devil is on the mediums. Yes, Devil's done both sets of tyres. It's a bit of a mistake there. It's one of rare. That's one of a, just a few rare, minute mistakes from Ruben. Very, he's not perfect. No one's perfect. But if you want the closest thing you're ever going to get to perfect here is Ruben. It's a poor exit by Jade, uh, by Devil, sorry, as he's fallen right off the back. But speaking of JD, he's catching Casey. He's now on slipstream range from as he comes towards the final turn. Dynarod, he's got himself in some clean air, and maybe Casey's just hoping that... Maybe there's a bit of a strategy between these two. Maybe Casey knows Santos is too far ahead. Maybe there is a bit of a pit strategy, because there's probably one more scheduled pit stop. A good six minutes ahead is the next pit window of the 20-minute mark. Maybe we see some one cuts, maybe we see some five cuts, maybe we see some one stops, especially at the front. But maybe Casey's now got in the back of his mind, I can't catch Santos, which Casey has the pace to. He put it on third on the grid. Casey definitely has the pace. But Santos is also quite a quick driver. But maybe Casey's thinking of speaking of which, JD Schneider just got himself through. As Casey's round to the back of him there. What happened here then? JD, he was actually ahead before the turn. If we can see further back, if it will let me go. Down towards the mountain, JD just tucked into the slipstream, got the better straight line speed, pulls out on the end thing, JD just about has it. JD had it before the turn, that was quite a textbook move from the German. He's going to be happy with that in case he couldn't really fight back. So Casey now found himself a second off, so I, what I was trying to say is maybe Casey rises and can't catch Santos, maybe he's going to try and hold JD up a bit and allow, allow Dino to catch up and get some solid points for the championship, but Dino snaking it, sorry, JD snaking his way down the dipper, almost losing the run there, just catches it, 
And JD, he's had the lap one, in, lap one incident, but for him, he's had a solid drive. He's not really spun. It's Casey br uh, brushes the wall again, giving it a nice love kiss. As Dino Ronald, his teammate is three and a half seconds behind him. But up at the front, Ruben. Again, we turn to Ruben and he's gone a bit shaky. But he nonetheless, he's actually pulling away from Devil. Maybe he's not got enough grip in these mediums, but I do believe now pushing to try and pull a gap to Devil. So maybe you'll be interested to see what the pitch strategy is for. Maybe he's just trying to get off these medium. Maybe he's just doing a 10 minute still on a medium, trying to get over him as quick as possible. Who knows? Ruben's a smart guy, he's got some nice strategy to him. It'll be interesting to see what he can do. Up towards turn two, Van Ruben comes around for a late apex. So just about missed it and. Let's see what Devil can do in this onboard camera. Nice drive as I can see on that wheel. There he goes. Why? There's a lot of wheel lock. What's gone on there? You see the wheel lock there at the bottom of your screen. He's turning in a lot. So is he got a high sensitivity, low sensitivity? He's going near enough all the way around. That's quite weird for your settings on your wheel. And the through turn two there, he's quite losing it. And then again there at McFinnigan Park and Skyline, Devil's really trying to push it and try and get onto the back of Ruben. But he just didn't seem to have to grip it. That may be the mediums as he comes down the hill now in the cockpit cam. Yeah, he's very shaky. He's almost into the wall and he actually did catch some damage on the left-hand side. You can see in the bottom left of your screen, he caught damage and that's not good. Devil's really pushing it and losing out big time. And Santos, he's also gaining. Is that going to be a premature pit stop? Is that going to be an early pit stop then? For Devil. Is Devil now feeling the pressure? Well, we had a great qualifying session. The qualifying session, I must say, is probably the best we've ever had here. But this race definitely has outshone for qualifying because Casey's now four seconds off the back. What's going on with Casey? Casey's really Casey's struggling on these mediums for time. In practice earlier, he was saying that he wasn't necessarily feeling the tyres, he was struggling, and now again, Casey Dynarod in practice was setting fastest times on mediums when everyone else is on soft, and Casey was quite the opposite so maybe Darnold he's also got, him, got himself onto soft so that's also a thing see when he started on the mediums now everyone else is on the mediums he's not on the soft finding his way through and is Casey going to let the faster guy through or is he going to defend the position as Casey's into the pit so Casey going for an undercut then I don't think he's liking these mediums and get off them as quick as possible OTBC he's going to pass him it is Brian though Brian's also into the pits it's a very awkward pit entry here. You can cause yourself some damage. Now, Brian is into the pits. The ART boys and the BNR boys all ready to go again. Up at the front. Two seconds of the lead between Ruben and JM Devil. Santos. Where is Santos? Is 19 seconds off the back. And JD, I don't think... No, JD's not really catching him. But Santos, you can't take away from him. He's having a... He's having a stunning drive as well. Online cruiser, he's down in seventh. For the start of the race, he was up in third. So... He started 10th, so no matter what, I like Cruz had a brilliant drive. Casey comes out in 8th, and Dynarod up into 5th, as he will have one more spot left. He will have one more pit stop left anyway. As he comes up for Mountain, he's got those yellow high, he's got those yellow high beams on as they come towards McFinnigan Park. So he's trying to chase down that 6 second gap between himself and JD. This is where you really want to be getting the most time on these softs. And as for softs, he's actually kept them alive for quite a while, and... He can go on to softs again, everyone else will be on the softs, so this middle since has been quite important for Dynarod. So only OTBC, I believe, will be on the mediums. Nice tight line through Forest Elbow there by Dynarod, and he's not pulling away much time. Up the mountain, you really want to be seeing Dynarod really needs to gain a lot of time to JD, as he's on the quicker tyre. This is where Donald has gained the most time whilst David Nots has been on the softs. He's, whilst David Nots has been on the mediums, he's been on the softs because he's already done the mediums, which is fair enough. But this is where he's been needing, needing to gain the most amount of time, and he has. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to be enough to go onto the podium, but it definitely shows the pace that Donald has. And maybe he's a potential race winner this season, but that Corvette is quite quick at Bathurst, and maybe the rest of the season... Who knows, but a bit shaky at the end of Murray's, down towards turn one he goes then. 
lap 20 with 20 minutes to go on the clock ruben leads from jm devil that gap's now holding its own as devil's hopefully holding the mistakes otb sees into the pits the canam crew are waiting for all black but they're not from new zealand into the pits they come he's out of fuel he's also got damage uh, you see it at the front both suspension and the front that's gonna have to be repaired as well that's quite severely impacted in goes the fuel then it's gonna be didn't have to take in necessarily a full tank of fuel because there's under 20 minutes to go but near enough full and what tires does he take as well but the type of tire the type of fuel he takes is the new tires actually fix his suspension anyway it seems what tires has he taken? He goes on to softs. He's not taken mediums out. I'm sure OTBC has, and that might have to be checked at the end. As both his lights are also flashing, that doesn't give him. Oh no! OTBC took the wrong tires, I believe. That's a shame on his debut. His Division 1 debut, I think that call for no in the chat was because he took the softs. Maybe has to put his foot down then. And just try and find some time. Maximize the time you've got on those softs. Because remember, everyone else has to pit as well. Came on Brian. I think he actually got a bit of an undercut. But Casey, he's in seventh. He's going to be waiting for everyone else who has to, who actually has to pit. Oh, online cruiser. What happened here? Online cruiser into the barrier as he comes through McFinnegan Park, through Skyline, now down towards the S's. What happened? It's nice, just deep into the dipper, and then just gets onto the grass, spins it round, all four tyres light up, and he's found himself reversing, and that's caused him some serious damage. That is very unfortunate for the German, as that's going to allow Brian to gain a big chunk of time on him. Dynrod, he's into the pits, and this will be his final stop. He's out of fuel, you see that red light? The Liverpool livery he's got on for his race suit and his mechanics is shameful, I must say, but the ART livery he's got on is quite beautiful. Let's see what he can do for this final stop. It's going to be hopefully going to be a quick one. That's a beautiful helmet he's got on as well there. You can see inside as fuel goes into that ART car. Where's Casey? Is Casey going to get past him? Casey's coming through the final turn now. I think Casey might just have him with this undercut. OTBC's out of room. OTBC, he's given up those chance for points here, but maybe that strategy has ruined it. Online Cruiser, he's going to be taking the softs. He's also going to get rid of the rest of his damage. It's Casey says he's into 11. I'm sure that's a glitch, yes. Where's Dynarod? Dynarod's come out of the pits in 5th and everything's booked. No. It says Casey's down in 11th, so... Casey's on lap 20. Is Casey a lap down? What's happened with Casey? Because it says Casey's a lap down for me. Casey's into the barrier as well. Casey's lag is causing him some problems. As Dynarod's got himself into 5th, I think Casey... Yeah, Casey's got blue flags as well. Is Casey a lap down? This may have to be looked at. Russell Cock, he's into the pits as well. So OTBC, he's just given up. So that's not good for Canam. As Casey's very shaky, but can anyone understand what's going on with Casey? Why is Casey now down in 11th? His internet is really causing him some problems here. And he's just going to have to let his teammate go, I must say. He's now down on 11 because Rolly's DNF'd. Oh, he almost into barriers. Casey, his internet cuts out. And right now we're down to 10. Three DNFs we've had. And what a start it was for Casey. And it, his race goes from bad to worse. But into the pits, then JD should I. And Casey's going to hope to get a nice undercut. Sorry, Donald's going to hope to get a nice undercut. Where's he on track? He's coming down for Conrad straight. JD also hasn't got to take as much fuel. He's 39 seconds behind. Darnrod, maybe his outlap hasn't been as quick as he would like. Outlap has been very important here. Outlap's always important, especially if you're going for an undercut. But JD, fuel will be going into that car. Zoli pops up and he'll, he'll have a nice comfort lead. And also the fresh tyres, especially once they go up to temperature. 15 minutes to go then. Where's Dynarod? Dynarod, he's coming down towards turn one as... He's had a solid drive, but Tim, let's talk about Tim. He started at the back of the grid. He started 13th, and despite the three DNS, only one of those DNS has actually been in front of him. Only one of his DNS has actually been in front of him, and 
from 13th. He's gained a lot of positions. Back up at the front though. Ruben now three second leads. He's really pulling away from Devil. As Ruben's also, he's a master at fuel saving this man. 14 minutes to go. He pitted at... It, the softs are looking invincible. Devil, he's also got damage. Devil just got past Terrible Tim, lapping him. I'd like quickly get rid of all of the graphics known to man. But JM Devil, his, he may have to pit again unless he starts fuel saving. So if he has to pit again, he's on the threat from this man here, Santos. Who actually, he's also yet to do his second stop. And speaking of which, in due time, he comes into the pits then. Those to break this glowing red in this night race, quite beautiful, I must say. JD Shadam, where is he? JD Shadam could have actually find himself having a podium. If he has a good outlap, he's got a fair bit of time. But again, Santos is only going to take about half a tank of fuel. But back to Ruben. Ruben's looking like he's going for one stop. It's looking like Devil may have to pit again. But Ruben, with under, four, with under 14 minutes to go, he's got just under half a tank, which is near enough. Perfect. The fuel tank can go about 30 minutes. So it's all good for him. Santos, how much fuel is he taking? He's taking a lot of fuel here. Lollipop goes up. He full tanked it. This could lead JD Shadam to have him here. As JD's just coming around the first turn. I would not risk that, Santos, at all. Well, I would not risk that at all, Santos. As now, De now JD's into slipstream range. But he did not need to take a full tank of fuel. Taking that full tank of fuel has cost him an extra 10 seconds in the pits, which is extremely unnecessary. All he needed to do was take half tank, maybe just a bit over if you're worried. But full tanking it with 13 minutes to go is absolute, excuse me, absolutely unnecessary. And now JD's going to be all up in his mirrors. As we ride on board of the German van coming towards McFinnigan Park at Skyline. Bit shakish there from JD. Almost just about avoiding the walls. JD should I'm then down towards the S's and the Dipper. He's under a second now. Is the gap as it just goes back over. Is JD maybe Santos is struggling for gripping his cold tires. He's gonna have to fresher tires, but they're only a lap fresher. They're not much different as JD gets a bit of a tight, slowish entry into the forest elbow and pulling away then Santos is from JD is Santos has got a really good exit but nonetheless JD if he's in that slipstream range once they start reaching max speed around about now he actually doesn't Santos pulls two tenths down the comrade straight as they come down towards the chase well if these two do actually go battling this could be a spectacular sight as Dynarod is on the softs He's also catching JD. That was eight seconds. It's now down to seven and a half seconds with just over 11 minutes to go. Across the line, that start lap 24 of God knows how many blue flags waving. If they catch up to traffic, that could also be harmful. Santos, is he ghosted? I think he was prematurely. Down towards turn two then. JD's firmly into that slipstream, but Santos still just has the power. Santos just seems to have the better top speed. Maybe it's for setup, but what car is Santos in? I do believe he's in one of the Toyotas, so it's gonna have it's gonna be alright on power, but that master's not too bad in, in a straight line either. But nonetheless, JD fairly good through the cutting turn three and four. J JM Devil will fast this lap and let's quickly just think about the standing so far. Ruben will be on 17 points. He took pole and finishes this way, which is looking like he will. He will win the race. Unless he's a mistake, which is rare from him, he will be on 17 points with 15 for the win and sec and two for pole position. 13 points for JM Devil with second and fastest lap, which Ruben may still go for. But who knows? Santos he will be on 10 points and so on so on so no funky stuff yet but Dynarod if he can find some time on those saucers but his car gets lighter as he gets less and less fuel 
as he comes down towards Forest Elbow. That gap now under seven seconds between him and JD. He's really hunting this. Fourth place will be a brilliant recovery drive from him. And you then just need to think, where would he be if he didn't pit? Down the Comrade straight though. Or as this man himself, Dyro, calls it the Commodore straight. As he, whilst race engineering BRT, he kept calling it Commodore straight. Because this man is a genius. Gotta love the Irish. But anyway, under 10 minutes to go. 7 seconds to find. It is possible. He's got some pace. He was put on second on the grid. He would have liked the extra 2 points for a pole position. But Ruben took them by the slimmest of margins as well. When you're less than a tenth behind Ruben, that's impressive because that man's quick. A 2.015 the last lap for Dynarod compared to JD's 2.02220. That is a mouthful to say. Santos now, 1.6 seconds. He's pulling away from JD, so he's looking safe. And now that JD's got to start thinking about saving some tyres or maybe just putting the hammer down to avoid the angry Irishman chasing him. He's gained nearly a second in the straight alone. Gained half a second down the down mountain straight as they come through turn three and four. JD up at the front. Six seconds is the gap now between Ruben and JM Devil. JM Devil looking ever so weaker. Santos is 45 seconds behind him. And again, early race. Should Devil is he feeling it? But if this maybe Ruben's just having enough race. But if it's this exciting all the way through, especially with qualifying into the pits, then goes Devil. We was on about earlier. I don't think Devil would have enough fuel to the end, and he's going to be going and not taking as much fuel as necessary. Hopefully not. If he doesn't do a San, if he does a Santos on full tanks, it Santos could actually have found himself if he didn't take full fuel. Actually battling for second but if it's this close all the way through I mean where would Dynarod be if he didn't been a Dynarod could find himself actually battling right at the front if he wasn't involved in a lap one accident because Dynarod's showing that he's got some pace he's quite quick Santos's last lap was actually his fastest lap of the race but if he didn't where would he be because if it's this close to all season, I mean, next to Fuji, maybe this just isn't a strong track for Ruben. Or maybe it is this close and everyone has improved this much. And hopefully we can have this exciting of a season and not Ruben dominating. Santos improves again. He's really chasing down Devil. Devil took fresh tyres, as you would expect as well. He's now 30 seconds off Ruben, so Ruben for wins near and secure for him as that is one of the most sport West cars getting out of the way for the defending champion. Up through turn five and down up towards Solomon Park. Let's get an ice on board view. But he's got an extreme amount of sensitivity on that way. Look, it goes all the way down. It's almost like he's taking a hairpin of how far it goes down. And that's just that's a tiny turn. So what's his sensitivity at that six street? It's like he's wrestling the car if in real life that would be, but I can't quite understand why it's like that. But nonetheless, he just needs to keep it out of the walls because Santos is 20 seconds behind and he may only be... Santos may actually only find himself 10 seconds behind. If he didn't have that run in earlier, if he didn't take full fuel. If Santos had a lighter car, he could only find himself 10 seconds off and maybe put Devil under a bit of pressure. Because if Devil is a mistake now, Santos could be gutted to find out that he had a nice chance at a second place, which... Would have been his joint best result, which he equaled at his de GTL debut at Brands Hatch. But anyway, the race goes on as Ruben into the pits, and now oh, here comes an effort for fastest lap, I believe. Ruben, he knows he's got the gap. Maybe, maybe he's also going to make sure he's got enough fuel to the end. It's actually looking at he only had two laps of fuel left, so soft go on, enough fuel to the end. And is this now an effort for fastest lap as well? Just under six minutes to go then. Ruben leads from JM Devil, followed by Santos in third place, having a cracking race. JD Shadim, he started sixth, got himself into fourth, and Dynarod started second on the grid, seven hundredths behind Ruben in qualifying. Lap one incident, don't actually know what happened there at uh, the lap one incident, but nonetheless, did lap one incident got some damage, came into the pits at the end of lap one along with a few other cars. And continued on. And now he's got himself back up to fifth. A brilliant drive from him. Came on Brian. He started down in eighth. 
He's now got himself up to six, scoring some solid points for BNR. The only person scoring points of Rolly is DNF. Online Cruiser started 10th, was in third for a good half the race. Looking like he is going to get a brilliant podium on his Division 1 debut. He got a couple of podiums last season in Division 2. But the podium on your debut would have been fantastic. Terrible Tim, he started dead last 13th and he's got himself up to 8th. Probably the best mover on the grid so far. Vaslincock, 22 seconds off the points. He started in 12th, got himself up to 9th. Even if it's not points, it's a brilliant race from non blessed And in last, Mr. Osaka started 11th, got 10th. But it's not points, non blessed but up the road is Vaslinkok. Again, if you can pass Vaslinkok, it's not points, but it's at least a position. It's bragging rise. And the DNS we've got this race are OTBC, who I think probably rage quit after taking their own set of tyres. Casey, who had internet problems. And the same with Rolly, who also DNF'd due to internet problems. So it's a real shame because Casey was having a good race. He was started third. Ruben is cracked, Van. Let's have a nice onboard then. So I think Ruben's going for fastest lap across the line then down towards turn one. Hell corner it is hell corner, especially in the Bath first 1000. Nels the Apex nicely gets the power on beautifully. Doesn't take too much of that exit curb because we've seen so far in this race, if you take it, it can send you into a bit of a spin, especially if you catch the grass on the right hand side of it. It is very sketchy, takes as much as he needs. He goes green in the first sector, and then he's back into the cockpit view as he comes up the mountain and through quarry. Now his apex nicely, you can really sling it in there if you have confidence, and he does in this Mitsubishi. This man is the number one Mitsubishi driver in the world, I'll point out. In the manufacturer series, he is number one for Mitsubishi. As he now comes up through turn five and six up towards Solomon Park at seven. See there, Solomon Park. Now McFinnegan Park. Slight down, I think that was a downshift there. Holds it through, shaky, just about saves it. He, he is on the limit here as he now comes down towards the S's. Keeping as close to the barrier as possible, maximizing the curve. He's two tenths up on his best lap. He's nearly finding himself sideways. He can make a mistake, but he really wants fast to slap it seems there. Going for a bit of a Valtteri Bottas pitting take from Sotis now coming towards Forrest Elbow, hugging that right hand wall. Nels very pecks nicely. Brushing voice, he sparks flying up at the end of Forrest Elbow. He's ready on volume. Let's see. The time to beat is a 2 minute point seven nine by JM that we see in the bottom right hand turn. Is he purple then at this marker? No, he's actually down on his best, so this won't be fastest lap, and this is the penultimate time anyway. This is the penultimate lap, so he's going to have one more lap to, do, to go. Light it, the lightest the car will be. The time goes on the two minutes, fan, so this will signal the final lap, fan, as Ruben, he's got four seconds to JMW. If he makes a mistake, he can still throw this race away. Is he going to go fastest lap, or is he going to secure it? Down towards the line. Here we go, Van, the final lap of the race. I think everyone will start this final lap. No, there's some people up ahead. I think this is going to be some people Some people already on their final lap, but this is Ruben's final lap of the race, Van, as he runs all the way up to turn two, also known as Quarry. Van, he's got the double left-hander as he goes up the hill of the cutting, turn three and four. If you mess up the entry to turn three, turn three really sets you up for turn four. If you mess it up there, you can actually lose a lot of time, because if you hit the barrier, you see in the background there, that's JM Devil. Just taking as much of the white line as possible. You don't really want to get further on the white line on the exit of turn three, because that will just mean you keep going on. It's like the exit of Stavlo 2 at Spa. Once you're on that AstroTurf, you are gone. But Ruben holds it together nicely. Hawks up through McFinnegan Park. Down towards Skyline then. He's not as shaky as he was last time. Let's see the split. Let's see the split time as it comes through this. Is it purple? Is it green? Is it red? What is it? He's half a second up. Maximizing as much as he can. Not shaky this time as he comes down the hill. Holds it together nicely. Holds that rear nicely as well. It means he's got his brake balance set perfectly. Let's see his exit then. He got it quite nicely. Hooked up nicely. Is he brushed the wall? No. As close to it. As close to the wall as he can, but he nails Forest Elbow as he runs down towards the chase. Then he's got this massive straight, he got a beautiful apex, he's almost running out of fuel. But this means the car just light as he can as he comes down the hill. What's the checkpoint? Is it purple? No, it's still green. 
Let's see, he needs to have a flying final sector. If he bends it now, that could be his race. Does he know he's going to have is, does he know fastest laps out of it? Four seconds to go in the race then. He comes down towards the final turn. Round the final turn at Murray's then. Ruben will come. Is it going to be the fastest lap of the race? I don't think so. But either way, that Mitsubishi, Ruben comes across the line to win round one of the GTL Division Championship Season 2. And he almost had it as JM Devil actually responded with fastest lap to block Ruben because that would have been fastest lap. But JM Devil held it and JM Devil will get second and through the chase he comes. It's a brilliant final lap, I must say, by Devil to hold off Ruben and defend that fastest lap and take an extra point, which could be vital in the championship. Round the final turn, then Santos will take his second ever podium. It's been a brilliant drive from him from fourth on the grid. He will take third. The Portuguese driver, followed by JM Devil, he's going to be happy with four from sixth from the grid. And Dynarod, despite having... He's also got engine damage. What actually happened? Did he... Dynarod actually caught engine damage on the last lap, which is quite fortunate. He will be able to make it round and take fifth. Which, after being down in tenth at the end of lap one, caught up in the accident, he will take fifth. He'll be happy with the points. He'll be the only points for the ART boys. As Casey will not be scoring. Brian and down in sixth. He started eighth on the grid. He's going to be happy with that, but... Here's the two biggest winners. Online Cruiser, he started 10th, got himself up to 7th. And Tim, what can you say about this man? Started 13th, dead last on the grid. He had a terrible qualifying, 6 seconds off the pace to find himself in, in the points. So he will be taking points for Canam. It's only one point, but points are points nonetheless. As Online Cruiser, he's going to come around the final turn and he will get rid of the rest of his penalty. And he will finish off the grid. So Ruben wins from JM Del and Santos to round out the podium. JD Shadine will take four, followed by Dynarod and KM O'Brien. Cruiser and Tim round out the points. Well done, Ruben. Is, is this going to be a familiar sight or is this just the start of an emphatic season? Which I must say it was. It has been a thrilling round one. The qualifying was amazing. Everything about this was amazing. Congratulations, Ruben. Well done, everyone. It's been fantastic. I've been in, and thank you all for joining me. Congratulations to all of our drivers. And I'll see you Friday, 8 p.m. for round two of the GTL Division 3 Championship.